Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. Welcome to today's video, the first of 2023. I took a little hiatus, um, among other things, you know, Christmas vacations, but also I broke my wrist skateboarding down the hill here. Uh, not very prudent, but yeah, that happened. I broke my foot and I broke my wrist. I have a chunk of titanium in here now. I'm fine. I'm recovering very well. My movement. I've been practicing drums a lot. That's another subject. I've been super in love with the drum set. I even got all new cymbals and drum kit and I've been practicing my little butt off because I want to be a better drummer for my productions, my recordings, my compositions. And that's uh, on the side of what I do here in the channel with you guys. Anyway, this is going to be a deep dive into the Joranalog Step 8. I've seen already a few very good videos by DivKid and Breeze and... Uh, I can't remember the other guy's name, but he did a really fine video recently as well. So I don't feel like there's a need for me to go over every little example of things that you can do as far as what's been described in the manual and the more immediate, obvious, quote unquote, uses of the module. Instead, what I'm going to do is give you a brief overview of the IO, the operation of it, and then go into experimentation with it. Let's uh, see what happens when you use it in audio rate. Let's do that kind of thing to it. Let's stretch it beyond the uh, immediate uses. So basically the step eight is a sequential tracking sampling register as it says right here, but you can think of it as a step sequencer with advanced features. Let's set something up here. Basically it has eight steps that have eight faders. These faders control the amplitude of whatever the incoming signal is. So if there's nothing plugged in, it's normal to 5 volts. That means you have a fixed 5 volt source that you can then dose individually per step. The way you can make it move from one step to another is by pressing this button over here or by sending it a clock or any kind of a pulse into the step input right here so we're gonna take the rise output from my contour one and as you can see already it's stepping through our eight steps over here you see these leds these are gate outputs per step this is very nice you can trigger something only at a particular step if you want to or trigger eight different things one at each step which can be a lot of fun as well right now we're using it sequentially we're cycling through the steps by sending it a clock into the step input over here. Now, let me grab my Generate 3 oscillator here. And I'm just going to quickly connect the output of the step 8 to the volt proactive input of that oscillator, just so you have an idea of its... And here we can make the clock quicker, right? So if everything is down, we're sending zero volts and the oscillator is fixed. Now if I move everybody up, I'm sending those five volts. So we've just gone up five octaves and uh, we're not adding any variation to it. But if, uh, if I draw something on this, in the fader positions, we now have a sequence. Right? So that's an immediate use of the module, right? Now you can also use that scan output for other things. So if I multi it here, multiply it, send it back here, I can also change, uh, I don't know, use a filter for example. And send this to filter 8 here in uh, audio mold to the input. And we'll take one of the outputs of the filter 8 to our main output over here. And, uh, and I can use another a multiplied output of the step 8 to open up the filter. Right? So yeah, so clearly you can use a filter, you can use a sequencer, not only for pitch, but for other things as well, such as a filter cutoff frequency there. So 
go to modulation source that way, right? Right? And we're doing very simple things here. We're not even using VCAs or envelopes or anything, just uh, to have an idea here of what's going on. Now, if I send something to the input here, then uh, we'll no longer be sending it just the stepped voltages. We'll be sending attenuated versions of whatever the incoming source is. So we're going to send an output of the Orbit 3 Chaos Oscillator here. So if I open everything up, we're sending the full Orbit 3 modulation, right? But stepped. Why is it stepped? Because we're using the sample function. Now that's a good time, a good moment to mention the sample versus track button, right? You see, with the track and hold, it's tracking the input, so it's letting out the the continuous uh, voltage variation as it comes out of the orbit three. But if I use the sample, then we are sampling at each clock pulse. We're sampling that orbit three. Uh, voltage and making it fixed for the duration of the step, right? So already that's pretty cool. We're creating a sort of a random sequence by using the step 8 as a simple sample and hold right now. So the Orbit 3 being a chaotic oscillator, it can be close to random. You know? It sounds pretty like a pretty random sequence. Now I can now attenuate some of these steps to change the amount change the width of the voltage that's coming in from orbit 3 so that makes it more subtle less jumpy right for most steps make a few steps be a little more extreme others be more subdued and so on another cool use right and again let's check it out in track Right, so that's letting the variation remain intact as it comes out of orbit 3. Which is a cool effect as well. It all depends on what you want to achieve. Right, so yeah, so we've seen it as a sequencer. We've seen it as a sample and hold, as a track and hold. The track and hold can also be used for things such as a ribbon controller, right? If you want to uh, use that to track uh, the voltage as you move your finger across a ribbon controller, but then maintain the last note, you can hold, you can track and hold. That's something that can be done with this. Another way to move it is rather than sending it a uh, step clock, you can send it a continuous LFO, for example, into the stage input over here. And this is a way to address the stage via CV. So each voltage will represent a different stage. So a varying voltage will vary the stage. So we're going to use the generate three number one here as an LFO. I'll put it in low frequency mode. We're going to grab the core output, which is a triangle, and throw it here into the stage input. The uh, output of the generator 3 exceeds the uh, range, right? So why don't we use a contour 1 as an LFO and see what happens there. This also exceeds the range, it seems. All right, so I guess we need to use an attenuator. Let's send the output of the contour 1 to one of the inputs of my select 2. Over here. We'll take that output to the stage input over here. And now we can a little more. Now, see we're getting seven steps. A little bit more to get get eight. There it goes. I can make this a little more logarithmic, the fall, the rise a little more exponential. Maybe make them a little bit more lopsided, so it's faster going up and slower going down. 
and that's pretty cool right there and I can actually change those parameters by using outputs from the Orbit 3 and that will make it more interesting as well. So let's control the rates of, or maybe the blend, the bend parameter of each side of Control 1 with the chaotic voltages from the Orbit 3 and that'll generate, well, we can change the rate as well, but we'll attenuate it so it's not so extreme. So we'll use another channel of Select 2 and uh, send that to change the rate of control 1, that way we get a variable clock as well. And we'll make orbit 3 slower. There we go. Right, so now, now we're cycling through the stages in a continuous manner. Use the track and hold as well. See, that's very cool that way. Really like it. It's a nice effect. You can reset, right? So, for example, I can send a uh, an output here from the generate three. To the reset I guess it should be a clock output what can I use for a clock output yeah this one the first contour one take that rise didn't work how I thought it would, so let's go back to using um, the step input here, and we'll make a really slow first clock here. So what that reset does is it goes back to the first step anytime that this goes high, right? So whenever my contour 1 goes high, it goes back to the first stage, see? So that's, that's pretty obvious, right? Now, you can also use the reverse. So whenever this is positive, the sequencer will go backwards. And we can change the rate of this chaotically as well. And that'll, that'll make a really interesting back and forth kind of ping-ponging of the steps. See? Let's go back to sample here. Make it a little faster. So, super cool. So these are more like controlled ways to create a chaotic or random sequence where instead of just letting it, you know, letting the freak flag fly, you're actually creating some movement through steps that are attenuating the incoming chaotic voltage in interesting ways, right? We can also use another output here of the Orbit 3 for our clock speed again. There we go. And of course, you can use the uh, gate output here to trigger stuff. So maybe we want at every fourth, every time the fourth step happens, uh, we want to, the thing is I'm already using my two envelope generators uh, in this system. So I'm not going to do that example just at this moment. Now let's remove the uh, Orbit 3 and just let it be a sequence. Right? And even that's pretty cool. See that? Now see how it gets fast, like almost audio rate? Oh yeah, so here's the thing. 
uh, that I wanted to try out. Let's go into the oscilloscope over here, and we're going to turn down the audio and pull out the whole patch for now. Okay, so the thing with the step 8, as with any analog sequencer, you can use it as a oscillator. If you send an audio rate source to the clock input, so that's the step input over here, now we're cycling audible speeds through the steps, and that means you can draw your waveform. Now there's a couple of ways to do that. The most direct way, and let's have a look here at the oscilloscope, I'm going to send a copy of that core to the clock. Hold on, let me split it up here. And uh, we're going to clock the oscilloscope with input 2 here. So right now, if I bring everybody down, we won't hear anything, we won't see anything, because all of the voltages uh, we're attenuating that incoming voltage thing. But as we start going up, already start hearing this pulse like wave here right now if I start bringing up other steps as you can see you're creating new sounds but as you can see, it's positive only, right? Because this is a um, positive 5 volts here. So what we can do is offset that output so that it's uh, in the middle. So we can use the uh, select 2 for that. We'll just use the top channel of select 2 as an offset. And we can centralize. So, like, if I put four steps up and four steps down, we get a square wave, see? Let's just go up in frequency here. Right, and so you see a square wave there, because we have four steps up, four steps down, so we're just going up and down, just making a square wave. But I can start drawing with it, see? And find different harmonics. Isn't that interesting? Let's uh, listen to that very t pitch. So yeah, so that's something you can do with other modules as well. Any, any analog sequencer that can go up to uh, audio rates can do this. Right, you draw your waveform, but they're all—they're always gonna sound squarish because it's just segments. Now, if we use something other than a fixed voltage here in the input, what's gonna happen? Something like an LFO here. Right, so now we're we're having an amplitude variation. as we're sending an LFO into the input, and that's what's being attenuated and sent out at all your rates, right? And of course, this can go to all your rate as well, and then you can get into some interesting ring mod kind of effects, right? So you have this fine control over your ring mod. Maybe. Of course, everything down, everything down, everything's attenuated, no sound. Alright? Let's make these really kind of skinny. Listen to that. So cool, but yeah, still, all very kind of chip tuny. Kind of harsh because it's all segments. Now, if I use the track rather than sample, then we get a more direct transfer, albeit uh, s uh, sequentially attenuated. But yeah, we get a more direct representation of the 
continuous variation of that output of the generate 3 that we're using as our voltage source. Right, and that's this one. Let's go back to LFO. And now it's more like a tremolo, right? Now, how do I make it more interesting? How do I make this not be so chip y so squarish? Well, I can use the contour 1, which is a slew limiter. And I can use it to create a slope between the segments. So we're going to take the output here. Uh, and instead of sending it straight to our... Uh, to our oscilloscope and our speakers, we're going to take the uh, contour 1 into slew mode, and we're going to put this in the input here, and we'll take the output and we'll listen to that. Let's see what happens. So right now, the frequency is so low that it's pretty much filtering everything, but as we start opening this up, Let's make the square first, and let's smooth out that square. Alright, so let's put the bends in the middle. Already this sounds smoother, right? Also, let's remove the, uh, the LFO from the input here, and just let that 5 volts be our source. Okay, so if I make this a little bit faster, we can actually turn this into a triangle wave. See? I've just converted that square from the step 8 into a triangle. Now, what's going to happen if I change the pitch, though, without altering the contour 1, that wave shape is going to change because we have a fixed rise and fall time, which right now are appropriate for this frequency to make it into a triangle. But as I change this, See, it becomes more of a square, again, as I go lower in pitch. And it starts losing volume as I go up because it's getting too much. Oh, this is actually kind of a cool effect. This wave shaping that's happening here. But let's say you want to keep it a triangle or keep it um, ramping rather than going up and down. What you can do is just control both the oscillator and the contour one with the same voltage, right? So let's say we'll use the orbit three again as a voltage source. We'll multiply it here in my multiple, right? In fact, I have another multiple over here, nice and handy. And we can send that same voltage now to first the oscillator, which is the second generate three here. Oh, hold on, I can't grab it. Right? And as you can see, when it goes up in pitch, it loses volume, right? And it goes down, it becomes more squarish. But if I now send a copy of that same voltage to the rate control of my contour one, See what happens? It maintains, since the contour 1 speed is also varying at the same rate as my oscillator frequency, it maintains, it respects that waveform. So now we've turned a square wave from the step 8 into a triangle, and we're able to have it keep its shape throughout the frequency spectrum, right? Now, um, we can play with making different wave shapes and they will also be ramped rather than uh, stepped as a square wave, right? So let's play around with that a little bit. Let's uh, just remove the, uh, the voltage source there to keep it steady again. And we're just gonna play with the waveform. See how it no longer looks so squarish, right? And it doesn't sound as squarish either. If I bring it this way, see the contour one all the way fast, 
Then you see the square again, and you see how harsh that sounds. And as I start bringing both sides of the contour one up, or so making the rise and fall times longer, we're basically filtering, we're shaping those voltage variations into ramps rather than until we barely hear anything anymore because we're filtering all of it. But yeah, it's a kind of a filter, but it's really a wave shaper. So we're using the combined step 8 and contour 1 to create interesting waveforms here. See, listen to that. And again, we can vary the pitch and it'll keep it'll keep our wave shape, see? So that's another reason to have a contour 1. If you get a step 8, getting a contour 1 is a really nice companion for the step 8 if you want to use it for this kind of a, a wave shaping possibilities, right? Let's put the Orbit 3 in uh, audio rate here and get a little crazy. And you can control, uh, if you use a mixer, you can control the rate of the contour one with something else as well. And uh, that way you have a CV control over the wave shaping, right? For example, for now, just for clarity, let's remove the source again, right? This is our waveform. You make it harsher or mellower, right? By controlling the contour one here. Now, if I send this to a mixer and then send an LFO to that same mixer and then take the output and send it to the contour one rate input. See, now we have kind of a Y effect as that LFO is affecting the wave shape right? and we still have our etch -a sketch over here kind of to draw and we'll bring out some harmonics all right and now we can go back to controlling with orbit 3 we can make the LFO more pronounced by turning it up here can make it faster too. Oop, that's a little too much. Cool, so step eight as a wave shaper. Oscillator companion, graphic oscillator, you can think of it that way. It doesn't go on its own. It does require you to send it an uh, audio rate oscillation from somewhere else. But then once you've done it, then you have, uh, you have this really nice... Uh, and we're now where we're tracking holding, now we're sampling holding again. That will make no difference when we're using the internal 5 volts. But it will make a difference when you use something else. Such as, why not, another output of the Orbit 3 here. Let's change the amplitude of each step and proportionally to the position of the respective potential amount per step, right? And our gate outs probably making some sound too, but they'll be divided by eight, right? No, not really. It's pretty... There you go. So any of these outputs. Yeah, these gate outputs is also at audio rate reflecting 
the frequency changes uh, that we're applying as well. So yeah, there's a ton of things that you can do with the Step 8. There are quite a few very good other videos that have been made about this module that cover more of that uh, basics, you know, maybe a more beginner-like approach, uh, or cover the bases as they mentioned in the manual. You can go check out those videos for that. This one was more of just me playing around and experimenting and discovering things. Another thing you can do is send the audio rate to the stage rather than step. And now that's going to be cycling back and forth between the steps in a different manner, right, than if you use the step. All right, let's go back to stage here. And that's really cool as well. You still have that control. The wave shaping control. Right? Less harsh, more harsh with contour one. So cool. So, yes, this is going to create different shapes because it's actually going back and forth so fast that you don't really see. It's going back and forth. So, yeah, I think this is, this is a good little exploration of some of the more uh, esoteric and unusual approaches to using Step 8. Um, we didn't get too much into uh, the shift register uses, but again, you know, I didn't want to get too repetitive and do the same thing that a bunch of other people have already done. So that's it for now. That's it for today. Uh, happy 2023. This is the first video of the year. And stay tuned as many more videos will be rolling out uh, very soon. We're doing one for Signos by Olivella Modular, uh, Three Body by Schlappy Electronics, the Hertz Donut, the Engine Oscillator, Double Oscillator that I'm building, and uh, a whole bunch of other really cool things down the pipeline. So, again, thanks for watching. Please hit like, subscribe, maybe join my Patreon, and uh, see you soon, and stay noisy.